Now, you know, okay, let's say I'm a, one of the business guys, the one percent of a lot of money. I can't invest in making shoes because you guys don't want to buy my shoes. Right? I can't make too many cars because I don't buy my cars. So what I do is, I buy corn in the future because I know there is a drought in the US and the corn, so there will be a shortage of corn in a few months' time. So I buy three months on the line, I buy tons and tons of corn. Okay? Then, as the day approaches, I also buy on the spot market. I mean, there's two things. One, you can buy contractually in the future, or you can buy on the open market. I also buy on the open market and push the price even higher. So I actually can make a killing out of corn in about three months' time by buying now, buying long, and after that, when the time comes, I buy some more, push it up nicely, make a big sum of money. Now, that's exactly how it works. That's what speculation in the commodities actually is. You make a, a right call, you have enough money, you do it, and, and you can push the prices up. You know? And next, it doesn't matter if people like this, the poorer parts of the world, actually suffer, don't have enough food because the prices go up, or they starve, it doesn't matter. That is what's happening among the 1%. This is what's happening. It's, it's, it's an obscene system. You know? But it is existing. All right? So next one. So, we, I don't think he understands that the problem here now is the distribution of income in the world is gone away from the normal rakya, from government to the 1%. You've got to understand that is the underlying problem. If you don't understand that, next, you probably want to understand this, that the man's income is causing poor aggregate demand, is causing the sovereign debt crisis, and the whole volatility of the financial sector. The whole problem happening in Europe and the rest of the world is this. You know? So even now, Bernanke, buying that money, you know, flushing money into the market by buying the bonds, is going to go not into production in the US, but it's going to go into bubbles in other parts of the world. Property markets are going to get pushed, you know. Share markets in third world countries are going to get. That's why people like in Brazil, the Brazil economic minister came out criticizing what Bernanke is doing, saying what you guys are doing is going to affect us adversely. You know, even Zeki was talking about we our institutions are strong enough to withstand the pressure of uh, America doing this. You know, it has impact because the the, 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 the businessmen in America cannot produce more shoes. Those guys don't want to buy shoes. They don't have money to buy shoes. So they're going to buy into the forex market, into the commodities market. It's going to cost more volatility. Okay. Next one. This is Greece. The huge devil going on in Greece today. Yeah? <coughs> That's the devil strike. Because the whole of Europe is in crisis. Uh, there's a recession, number of countries already in recession. Okay? Now what is frightening about this recession is it's not we have recessions every ten years, Dr. Zulu was talking about. But what's coming up now is not an ordinary recession. This is actually an out of the norm recession. Because normally, six one six, normally in a recession, you know what this guy said. You know who this guy is? One of the one of the one of the brilliant economies of this century, of the last century. Keynes. 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 Now see, Keynes basically said the government must step in and provide aggregate demand at times of need. When the economy goes in downspin, you don't just sit back. You sit back, you're going to go further and further downstream, you're going to crash. Government comes in and spends. Concept of counter cyclic spending. Now that's Keynes' thing. And uh, Dr. Zul talked about you know, pump priming. Who pumps, who primes the pump? Government, right? Can bankrupt governments do any pump priming <laughs> If you cannot borrow money to pay your staff, like in Greece, or like now in Spain, or in Italy, you can't borrow money for running the government. Can you borrow money to pump prime your economy? So I think we're in deep shit now, because <laughs> they're going to crash. They're going to crash, and the only tool they have to solve the problem of crashing economically, recession, is by government spending. And government spending now, in Europe, is a huge problem. So now they have told the countries, don't spend. You look, you bring your budget down to below 5% or else you won't lend you money. Italy, same thing. You know, the, the guys are lending money to these guys. I say, control your spending. But guys control the spending, the recession is going to deepen. They haven't thought away out of it. Because they don't, no one wants to talk about the 1%. The whole problem comes from the 1% grabbing too much of the wealth. And if you don't address that problem, they're going to have a recession. And it's going to get deeper. Now all this, Najib won't understand. Okay. So not understanding all this, then you cannot do any of the things that's required to get out of it. Okay, next one. You see, this is what's going to happen. It's not happening. 
too much money in the 1%, could have a severe recession, it's prolonged, rising prices of food, and also climatic change. Okay, next one. Okay. So, so these are the problems you want to deal with, right? Now, bearing all those underlying problems in mind, okay, from the socialist perspective, a larger perspective, how do you handle this? Okay, next one. Okay, so let's say you know you have this meltdown in Europe, you have rising price of food, and 50% of relations are all this funding. <coughs> Obviously, what the budget should do is have a retraction fund. The MTC talking about the last 15 years, please have a retraction fund. So people lose their jobs, at least get some kind of support. You know, one third of the people lose their jobs in a recession, get nothing because the country just have a shutdown. They don't just have a lockout. They don't get their last month's pay. So we've been talking about this for the last 15 years, and then now, it's still going on and on. They're talking now going to ILO to get ideas. Basically, it's one way in which the post police have to invite ILO to have a discussion. So it's still, but the government can start as well. The return fund is so useful for workers at the time of the lay off. And not only for workers, you know, it also have small businessmen. Because if the workers lose income, all the pasabaram traders, all the small businessmen also will lose income. Isn't it? So by, by providing this thing, they're helping the economy stay afloat, you know. It's a kind of counter cyclic spending, which is also socially just. Household repayment. During the recession, a lot of people, a lot of families, may not lose jobs, but they lose overtime. And overtime contributes about 30 to 40 percent of their household income, you know. When they lose overtime, then they can't maintain their household payments. And a lot of families run into areas of the banks. Can they have a support service, support fund, a, a kind of auxiliary fund by the government to sustain that? I'll bet you won't be there in the budget. I'll bet you. None of this will be there in the budget. You know? Job creation fund. You know, at time of a time of a recession, you know, you need to create jobs. You know, there's so much of urban renewal you need. You know, there's so many housing areas, there's so many you know, quarters from the Kabanda who need, you know, amenities and all that. We can do that. We can use a certain fund, stop the market a bit by, you know? It's yeah. huge, what, 40, 50 billion there. With ten percent of that can give you a nice you know, fun to have a lot of public works done with relation labor. It won't be there. I think all these things won't be there because they don't see the problem. They don't see the problem. How can they have solutions? It's not. Okay, TPP. See, the TPP yeah, is, is quite a terrible thing, you know, because the TPP basically increases the power of corporations hmm, in a number of ways. For example, it uh, talks about you know, uh, extending patents. Now patents for drugs for 20 years don't make it longer. They brought in something called data exclusivity. That means even if you do a generic, you can't use their trials to argue for your generic. Because that is their property. That, 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 that the trials they did. They make things more and more difficult, you know. There's something they call expropriation clause. That means the government does something that affects your profits, you're expropriating them, you've got to pay them back. So the government, I think it was in, uh, was it in uh, Uruguay, wanted to bring in, for Philip Morris, ask them to put this terrible photographs of people with lung cancer on their cigarette box. And they took that to court, they said, you're going to affect my sales. That's expropriation of my profits. Okay. So, so this, is, this is the kind of thing they have in the TPP, you know. So we have to, are we going to and, and that is the underlying problem. There's too much power in the corporate sector, too much money going there. You've got to go against that. And to go against that is something that you can't go against it alone. You know? Because you need to do it as a, as a group of countries going together to do it. We just, let's say, we, let's say Malaysia itself is okay with raise corporate tax by 10% or 15% next year. We may lose companies going overseas. But if a group of countries together agree to do that, you know, have a different kind of South-South cooperation, which is people-based. These are kind of things that Malaysia maybe should be thinking of doing, of how do you address the power of that one percent. And that is what the world's majority are asking for, the occupied movement in the US, of the, the indignados in Spain, you know, the strikes you see in Europe, the Middle East, people are asking that the power of the one percent be curtailed, that drugs be used in a more responsible way. Why can't we go that way? But you're expecting this budget to do that, I think we'll be very disappointed. Okay, I'll talk a few more things. Stopping stacks, I think maybe I've already got back to those notes. Stop. You know, let me just talk about tariffs, you know. This thing, I think the whole issue of we shouldn't have tariffs to be free trade, you know, 
You could have questioned that. See, in Malaysia, let's say we have a proper minimum wage, right? There is some of our exports, some of our factories which produce for the Europe market, will then have goods that are a little bit more expensive and may be undercut by exports from Vietnam, Vietnam from China. So you lose those factory jobs. But at the same time, the increased wages that we are paying will create domestic demand. And we can have actually other factories producing for this. But with no tariffs, that means the low, low, low produced stuff from Vietnam and China will soak up this additional demand from our waste wages. And we end up with a net loss in factory jobs. You get my point? Okay, so that, that's important. That means we, we are now being constrained to keep in a low wage regime because we're scared that we're going to lose manufacturing jobs. But you know, the last time I saw the Ten Commandments, it didn't say, thou shall not have tariffs, you know? I mean, <laughs> say you shouldn't steal, you shouldn't kill, you shouldn't forget someone's wife and all that. He said all that, you know? didn't say that, you know, thou shall not have tariffs. You know, but the, the, but the free trade people make it sound like the moment they talk about having tariffs, having, you know, no, some, 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 some restriction to trade, they take it as an anti-human rights, as an anti-democracy, as it's against human beings, you know, the way they, they talk about it. At once you're a communist, you know, at once you're, you know, atheist, at once you're a communist. <coughs> I don't question it, you know. Maybe we shouldn't have tariffs, as I say, a group of countries agree. We have a fair FTA, fair trade agreement. And we all increase corporate tax, we all increase minimum wages. And among us, we have no tariffs. But the guys who don't do that, don't increase corporate tax, they don't have proper minimum wages, we 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 incur tariffs on that. Why not? It's not the Ten Commandments, I don't think in any of the other religious texts either. Why not? Why can't you have a fair trade that is pro people? Can you sanction those who don't follow that? These are things that I think Malaysia can leave, that we should leave. And these are issues of crime issues. But if you're looking for this in this current budget, I'm very sorry. You won't see it. Okay, next one is anything else? Okay. See, people like Chavez are trying things. You know, like the, the, the South South Corporation happening in South America. We can learn from that. Maybe some of the things there may not be able to follow, but you know, I think these are issues that we have to look at. But if you're looking at this kind of thinking out of the box, thinking of authority for the future, thinking of how do you handle climatic change, thinking of peak oil, thinking of all these things, then don't expect anything in this stupid project. Okay, thank you. Yeah.